Hello and welcome to our one special place podcast. Today's episode we are focused on the revolutionary, completely unique taste program by One Special Place. Are you wondering what is this taste program all about? Today we have with us Suhana Shreyan, a distinguished dietitian at the Department of Nutritional Health, giving us a taste of what this taste program is all about. Suhana specializes in autism awareness and nutrition and she has a wealth of expertise. Suhana, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for welcoming me to this podcast and uh, for a lovely introduction. Thank you so much. So I must tell you all, Suhana has been working for quite a few years with children with autism and she has a very holistic approach to how she deals with nutrition to neurodiverse children so it's indeed my honor and privilege to have her here today so ma'am i have a couple of questions for you i would like to kick start the whole thing by asking you what exactly is taste program taste program is a multidisciplinary program where uh, there are there is a speech therapist occupational therapist and dietitian who collaborate with each other and try to uh, understand the child's needs in a, you know a ho- holistic approach where we understand all the areas of um, difficulties that the child has whether it is oromotor or whether they have some some form of sensory aversions and sensitivities so initially it starts with the uh, occupational therapist and the speech therapist who find the root cause of the problem and then uh, i also help the uh, child um, with nutritional needs during that period whether supplementation is needed or whether there's any other form of foods that they could try while the other therapies are going on and then once the uh, root causes are solved then i focus on actually giving a menu plan so it is not directly with food first but the root cause of it, you know Lovely. the problem the child faces yes i can understand ma'am so actually yes feeding of children is a cumbersome act which in the first 3 to 4 years till the child starts eating by themselves is a household and i'm sure it's a very bigger it has a bigger uh, a connotation when it comes to neuro- neurodiverse children so i can understand the role that's been played and it's very interesting that you have an ot uh, slp as well as a nutritionist working together so uh, can you tell me generally what are the common challenges that children face when it comes to feeding by itself so the common challenges that they usually face is uh, due to sensory aversion or texture sensitivity they are not able to try new foods and they show different uh, behaviors while they are at the table so um, it could be you know uh, liking a certain food for some period of time eating uh, it very often and then suddenly they don't like it at all because of sudden uh, taste or uh, texture or differences and it varies again which makes them more picky eaters and parents are so confused as to what to feed them uh, once they you know just realize that what food the child is liking the child again changes uh, his or her preferences so right. this is a very huge challenge for parents right very very interesting and how do these food challenges directly impact a child's you know overall nutritional health so um now if they're not able to eat certain foods like for example uh, dairy uh, foods then they're not able to meet uh, calcium needs because it's a major sh- source of uh, calcium and usually children don't have a habit of eating vegetables during the early few years because they're still getting used to learning to eat new new foods so uh, it becomes a challenge to meet calcium needs and their bones are affected and indirectly impacting you know they are height or it could even be uh, you know uh, some children find it difficult to put on weight because they are not able to eat uh, due to their picky eating so it depends on each child and what type of uh, you know nutritional deficiencies that they have right 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 makes a lot of sense correct at the end of the day 
it's all directly related to the growth level of the child right makes a lot of sense ma'am uh so ma'am also i would like to also understand generally what are the kinds of foods that children have um, you know a problem with eating is it only the, is it is it only certain textures or uh, is there anything else specific when it comes to it uh so when it comes to textures uh, there are uh, different uh, two different textures one is soft mushy or it is either crispy and you know uh, nice and uh, crunchy to eat and right. uh, uh, sometimes even the the temperature of the food also matters sometimes they might not be able to, be able to eat too cold or too hot uh and even whether it is uh, soft food or hard food so there are many uh, uh more you know uh, factors that has to be considered uh another uh, factor that i've noticed or you know issues i've noticed is that they uh, choose a particular food group or the a particular color say for example some children like only food that is white in color and that is also a he- eating habit that uh, you know uh, they choose because of some um, uh, symptom that is making them like foods that are only white so it depends right. from child to child wow so interesting i mean we think life is difficult for us with a small kid and life yes. is so different and unique and it's so interesting that one sp has come up with a, a special taste program which is uh, catering to this uh, uh, particular uh, segment which probably many of us have not even thought about uh yes. ma'am also a huge part of this also comes yes uh, there is a lot of uh, aversion to certain kinds of foods etc but what are those specific behaviors which parents have to try to inculcate in them right from a very young age is there some certain steps certain actions that uh, as uh, we are the ones who are preparing the meal for them that we can try to incorporate right from a young age so usually uh, some um, habits that parents have is because they want to feed their child they find different ways of uh, getting them to eat so for example showing the screen and then feeding them or uh, you know um, trying to um, distract them from uh, you know actually seeing the food and feeling the food and then uh, feeding them fast fast because usually when uh, children uh, don't eat they are they lose uh, interest uh, very fast and they start uh, refusing the food so again distractions have helped them to feed them but it just worsens and worsens so what right. they can do is um, initially they can start finding out different foods that the child actually likes make a food diary that could you know help them uh, jot down all the preferences and then start trying new new foods um, and seeing how the child reacts to those foods whether they like it whether they don't like it uh, trying to explore with different textures whether they like soft uh, dosa or they are like crispy dosa so in each food different uh, textures help us understand um, which uh, side they are more uh, they have more affinity to whether it's the crispy uh, food texture or the soft food texture or whether they like the food warm or they like the food hot it's, it all depends on the child making a food diary would be really helpful to them that's a very very key important point that you have raised ma'am ma'am uh, could you also give us a little highlight on exactly like now if i take up a taste program for my child because i'm sure this is something a lot of fellow mothers must be having in their minds if i start this how exactly does this program work like i know they will be working with an occupational therapist with an slp and as well as a nutritionist but could you break down this process for me in a little simplistic way so first i would uh, like to um, tell who this program is for and uh, it's used mo- it is actually for picky eaters who um, have extreme uh, you know food habits uh, that prevent them from eating many foods so the most important red flag red flag that the parent would uh, you know notice is um, they can count their uh, the number of foods their child eats Uh, you know in their fingertips it's like so less wow. and another thing is yeah they might exclude an entire food group say for example they won't eat vegetables at all they might eat fruits but they just won't eat vegetables at all so that's another red flag uh, where uh, it, it's important to help the child uh, be uh, able to explore and interact with different uh, you know uh, foods that are served to them 
when it comes right. to biting the vegetable or you know uh, seeing how it is it begins with even licking sometimes okay. so uh, the occupational therapist and speech therapist will um, help the child you know uh, uh, understand every step of the way where the problem is and uh, they'll be able to um, you know um, let the child explore but my job is to uh maintain the child's nutritional uh, health so say for example if i notice any deficiency in the beginning if it is not met through diet uh and the the child is not having a balanced diet then i either uh, give a supplement or i tell the parent to serve uh, more amounts of food that they like which can meet those uh, nutritional deficiencies and you know reduce um any uh, symptoms that are caused because of those nutritional deficiency right right yeah. right yes very interesting ma'am very interesting ma'am would you be able to share with us uh, without taking obviously the name of the child any specific cases that you have dealt with um, when it comes to the taste program so uh, there's this child who wasn't uh, trying any uh, you know f- food you know she liked the food she would uh, just uh, stop eating uh, the food after a period of time but when it came to vegetables and certain fruits she would just not at all uh, you know touch it and she would be like gagging and uh, recently the uh, speech therapist told that uh, she is um, you know trying to lick and taste the uh, food that she had offered during therapy and that was a very good improvement so wow. we are hoping to see uh, more success in her case excellent ma'am excellent ma'am so generally you were talking also about uh, certain children liking uh, crispy food alone and obviously crispy food means it's fried food right and yes, uh, certain yes. children not liking uh, soft foods etc so uh, is there any specific uh, ways that we can try for example if a child is only interested in eating uh, crispy foods how do we slowly introduce uh, softer foods to them what are the specific action points that a parent can take so uh, it could uh, be like um, the food that is prepared uh, maybe the inner uh, filling could be soft and the outer filling could be crunchy and slowly slowly they can you know try to um, initially what the child would do the child would just eat the outer coating they might not eat the inner coating but maybe with repeated exposures uh, the child may f- get the taste of the you know filling that is there inside and uh, slowly slowly they can uh, you know uh, be able to uh, create more recipes that are similar to the foods that they liked that would help them help the child uh, you know uh, try to have variety of foods and we usually uh, me, uh, me as a dietitian i usually help parents with different recipes um, you know that is my job in this taste program where i connect the foods that they like uh, with the foods that they've never tried or don't like and make it uh, you know find a in between where you know even the parents find it easy to cook and the child also finds it easier to try new foods wow it's so nice in fact i've read i've uh, seen on um, uh, the social media of uh, one sp the uh, the recipe book that you had made and in fact uh, that has such lovely recipes which are so easy to make for children and full of full and full of uh, nutrition so that thank you so much ma'am for sharing thank you about this also it's really nice uh, ma'am I know that a huge role is played by the parents when it comes to uh, feeding but also there is Uh, there are certain problems that parents have in in their own home itself like restriction of time restriction of having if they have multiple children they need to cater to the food needs of the other child etc so uh, are there also any specific ways that uh, parents can try to make their life easier because uh, i know that it is difficult for them to prepare a separate meal for uh, only their neurodiverse child right so is there certain uh, methods that you would recommend them to follow when it comes to feeding better or cooking better at home itself so the first uh, advice that i would uh, recommend is to make uh, a habit of meal planning uh, for an entire week this would help them understand that uh, there are common uh, dishes that all the children or everyone in the family like 
and they could start uh, you know slowly uh, introducing new new foods during the weekends so that the ch- uh, child who doesn't like a particular food also gets a chance to you know um, adjust to a new taste this would help them to build more uh, number of um, you know uh, dishes uh, over a period of time and they sh- the parent won't have much uh, difficulty in you know she w- it's not necessary for her to prepare different meals it would be better if she tried that during the weekends and uh, making just a single um, you know menu f- for the entire family during the weekdays very interesting very 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 interesting i think today you have brought out some very interesting points one thing that i totally loved and that was so new for me was about uh, when you introduce soft foods having a crunchy outer coating and a softer inner side and the i love the idea you're talking about the the food diary which probably makes something which all of us should probably inculcate because uh, i think it's a good idea for us to be more conscious of what goes on our plate and to understand the root cause of these problems that children have with their relationship with food right yes. so ma'am uh, so one last question that i have for you is i would like to know how is it possible is there any particular practical tips that you can offer for making a meal time more enjoyable for the child because that's a very stressful time for the family itself so if you could give us some practical tips that would be really helpful so i would like to advise all the parents to have um, ensure that there is a positive uh, interaction uh, during meal times where there is no forcing and the parent should say bye bye to screen time and the child is able to have an enjoyable experience which they deserve it's not only about food but how the child has a positive relationship with the food and this can also influence both physical and emotional aspects of the child's growth it shouldn't be stressful but a happy experience i would also like to add a point about the program where uh, this program is intended to create many success stories with collaboration with uh, you know our speech therapist and occupational therapist and myself di- the dietitian and uh, we want to ha- uh, the child to have strong oral motor skills for eating up to the uh, time where they are able to have a well balanced diet without any fuss without being a picky eater and uh, the duration uh, the child uh, the duration uh, that we usually see initial improvement would be uh, after 3 months of attending this program and for best results of this uh, program it would uh, be better if the child is enrolled for 6 months thank you lovely 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 i remember back when i had my first child uh, my mother in law gave me an advice that you first eat your meal and then you feed your child i was surprised yeah. to hear this and she told me that that's because if your tummy is full you will be lesser stressed you will stop thinking mm-hmm. about in your tummy and you would be able to feed her at peace so i think today we've received some really interesting insights and i'm sure that all of the parents who have tuned in and other therapists who are listening to you would be really inspired to understand the core uh, intricacies of this program and would definitely like to get in touch with you for starting their journey with the taste program thank you so much suhana ma'am thank you so much for inviting me so dear audience keep listening to all of our other podcasts we deal with different topics every week we have different experts across the fields coming and talking to you about various topics today we learned about the taste program and there is so much more waiting for you in all our other episodes tune in to the one special place podcast signing off is your host today ananda take care